We bow our heads and we say a prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give you thanks for today, for the opportunity to worship, for the opportunity to grow as we study. Bless my words, Lord God, and bless the meditation of our hearts that we might know your victory and live our lives confidently each day knowing, knowing that you have defeated sin and death for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, it's a normal thing to try and live as long as possible and avoid what? Death. Death. That's a normal thing. God did not create us to die. He created us to live how long? Forever. And so it's a normal, natural thing for mankind to say, I would rather not die, but I would rather live. What is unnatural is to say, yeah, I, I, let me go seek death. It's not a normal thing. Especially for us who know Jesus Christ, we understand that in Jesus there is always hope. There is always the possibility and the truth that God will and can make all things work out for our good and for the good of those around us. But our world does not understand that. You and I know that even in death, that there is hope that even in death, death is not the end, that there is something after death, and that even if death should come and get us, that it doesn't really, really control us any longer because of Jesus Christ. Our world doesn't get that. It tries to deal with this thing called death, and it can't quite figure out how to deal with all the problems that surround it. Part of our world wants to live forever, right? They never want to face death. I was reading an interview with a futurologist, which I didn't know there was such a thing. But this was someone who studies the future. I'm not sure how he studies the future, since it hasn't happened yet. But somehow, basically, he's making predictions He's making uh, prophecies about what's going to come. And he says that if we live to be live until 2050, we will not die anymore. Because he predicts that by then, we will have figured out the key to immortality. Either, either by, 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 by cloning organs and cells and reversing the aging process or halting the aging process, or more likely, he says, by figuring out how to download our brain onto the cloud. And then we can just live in different robots or androids uh, forever. Now, all, so all you got to do is make it till 2050 and you're good to go, right? I don't know. I don't know what technology is going to bring. The only reason why I doubt that that's going to happen is because Jesus almost promises you and me that we're going to die, right? Uh, the soul that sins is the one who will die. That's almost a promise, right? But whether or not is not the issue. So the issue is that every way in which our world tries to live forever is going to fall short. Every way that our world tries to deal with this thing called death is never going to really deal with the issue. Some people will say that they, they recognize that they're not going to actually physically breathe and have a heartbeat forever, but they still want to leave a legacy behind so that in a way their name lasts for how long? Forever. Going to do something in my life so that people remember me even when I am gone. It is in some ways of uh, trying to live forever and fight against this thing called death. The reality is, unless you're somebody who's outstanding and stupendous in your life or really, really bad in your life, you will probably be forgotten. Right? Genghis Khan, we all know him, right? Julius Caesar, but who came after Julius Caesar? Historians might know. You and I. The emperor of Rome, and we forgot his name. How do we deal with death? You ever read an interview with one of those people who did one of these mass shootings? 
You ever read where they talk with them about why they did what they did? About half of them did it because they wanted to make sure that people would pay attention to them. They felt neglected, they felt empty, they felt lonely, they felt like no one even knew that they were alive. And if they did this awful thing, then at least, even if it was for a bad reason, someone would know that they were alive. In a way, it is a fighting of death. A warped backwards one, but that's what it is. And then there's the other side. Our world almost seems to encourage some people to die. You get to a certain point in life and your life is no longer what? Worth living. How do we deal with the difficulties of this life and this world? How do we deal with this thing called death? How do we conquer death? How do we live forever? Nothing that the world has to offer can really answer that question and deal with it. But Jesus gives us an answer. You know, the, you know the account, we studied it for a couple months back in April. After Easter, we looked at uh, John chapter 11. In the midst of that, John, Jesus appears to Martha, comes to visit, not appears, it makes probably mean that really bad. He came to visit Martha. He was good friends with Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Lazarus dies, right? Jesus, and he's been buried. Jesus comes to visit Martha and he tells her this very special I am statement been looking at the I am statements of Jesus, understanding who he is and what it means for us. And today Jesus doesn't use any pictures like I am the sheep gate or I am the good shepherd or I am the light of the world. He tells us very plainly who he is. I'm going to read to you the account of, the, of Jesus and Martha. John chapter 11, beginning at verse 17. This is what we written. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus was already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in their loss and the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will live again, will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. This is the word of the Lord. I am the resurrection and life. There are so many layers to that statement of Jesus that it would be impossible for anyone to summarize all the different things that Jesus is emphasizing with that simple statement. But I'm going to try. I am the resurrection and the life. I think one of the things that Jesus is telling us with these I am statements is he's, he's claiming exclusivity. And what he's saying there is that there are all these other things that claim to be these things, but what? I am the only one. And he's telling us that the only way to truly live and the only way to truly conquer death is through, through him. All the efforts that we make to try and live the life that God intended us for, to live, the reasons that he created us to be, to live a life that is fully what God wants it to be, can only be found in, in Jesus. Any effort to try and live a life of purpose, of meaning, the life that we were intended to be outside of Christ Jesus is going to lead to emptiness and nothing. The whole point of the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Solomon looks back at his life, and he lived a life. He lived everything that this world has to offer, and he looks back on it, and he said, it's all meaningless. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Meaningless, a mist of chasing after the wind. Emptiness, vainness. Psalm 124 seems to say the same thing. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, his watchmen stand guard. 
to try and do something, to live your life, to build something, to experience life as it's intended without Christ Jesus is going to lead to emptiness. Jesus says it later in John, I have come that they may have life and have it what? Live a full life as God intended. We need to be connected to Jesus Christ. Any attempt to truly live outside of him or without him is going to lead to emptiness. Even the passage that we read from Galatians just a moment ago, listen to what Paul says. I'll read it to you again. Verse 20 there. I have been crucified with Christ. I'm dead. I'm gone. I've been crucified. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. The life I live, truly live, is found in faith in a relationship with Christ Jesus. Without him a part of my life, then everything is empty. And even any effort to try and live beyond death is only solved, is only answered in Jesus. I am the resurrection. He undoes this thing called death. He reverses this thing called death. He, he, he takes this thing called death and he, and he kills it. So that you and I, even though we die, will for how long? Forever. I think the other thing that Jesus is saying is not only that he and he alone is the one who gives life, that he and he alone is the only way to conquer death, but I think he's telling us that that's a good thing that is going to happen. I have trouble figuring out whether or not I should have another plate of food at supper time. I sit there and wrestle with myself, and usually I probably make the wrong choice, right? Mm -hmm. I am glad that the choice for whether I live or whether I die, or how long my life is going to last, or when my death is going to come, and in what manner it's going to come, is in God's hands. Right? I, I would get that answer wrong all the time. Wait, wait, just a little longer. Wait, not yet, right? But to understand that the Lord of life is God Almighty, and it is Jesus Christ who loves me, who died for me, is wiser than I am, and that it is he who determines how long I live and what manner my death is going to come. That's a great comfort to me because I know that when my death comes or the death of one that I love comes, that this was something that was determined by someone who's smarter than me and who loves me and those that I love more than I love myself and that I love them. And while it's sad and it hurts and I don't love it, I trust the fact that God knows the best time for all of these things to happen. I am the resurrection. I am the life, Jesus says. Nobody else. And I find comfort in knowing that I don't have to sit here and determine when my death is going to come. Imagine if that was your choice. I don't want that pressure. I, you know, that I don't need that. But to trust that the Lord of life, the one who loved me and died for me, looks at me and he says, this is exactly where you need to go. This is exactly how long your life is going to be. And all I have to do is what? Trust him. I think he's also setting a warning here. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He's telling us that he and he alone is the only one who is supposed to end life. <clears throat> and any attempt outside of that to try and end my life or someone else's life is really to say to the Lord God, you're not the Lord of life, but I am the Lord of life, and I'm the one who gets to determine when I die or when that person dies. Murder. Even suicide, my own. It's not right Right? Even if it's doctor assisted. The world gives us lots of logical reasons why this would be a good, wise, rational thing to do, but all of them lack one thing, and that is hope in Jesus Christ. 
Hope in Jesus Christ tells me that even death cannot rule me, cannot govern me. My life is in the hands of Jesus. Amen? In the attempt to end life outside of God Almighty flies in the face of the fact that Jesus says, I am the life, not you. You with me? Now, any time that we've done that, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ through faith in him. But at the same time, God would tell us that life belongs to him, and he and he alone is the one who has the right to end it. Amen? I am the resurrection. I am the life. I think the other thing that he's saying to you and me is that he hates death. I hate death. Don't you? There is a lot of things about it that just, you know, stink. That's too light of a word. The separation that it causes, the broken heart, the just messing up of your life, right? The, the, the emptiness, the loss, the loneliness. Death is a horrible thing. But Jesus despises it even more than you and me. He despises it so much that he came to die to destroy death. That's how much he hates it. That's how much he despises it. And he did that so that you and I would never have to die again. He says, I am the resurrection. I have conquered death. I will reverse death. I despise it so much that I will not let it control you. I am the resurrection. I am the life, he says. I do not love death. Yes, the Bible tells us that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints, but not so much because they die, but because they get to live forever. God doesn't sit here and rejoice when someone dies. He's, he is broken as much as you and me. But what he did is he conquered it, he reversed it, he undid what death does. That you and I know. And even though in this life we may die, face death, deal with death, either our own or our loved one. But through Jesus Christ we know that it is not the end. Jesus didn't say, I am the end, I am death, there is nothing more. He speaks to us hope. He says, I am the resurrection. I promise you, I promise you to undo and reverse what death has done. I am the life. You will live forever with me, even though you die. It may be a morbid subject maybe not what you wanted to hear today but it's probably what we need to hear <coughs> because whether we recognize it or not death follows us around every day amen? amen we deal every day with the fact that we are going to die we deal every day with the fact that those that we love have died or are facing death so how do we face it how do we deal with it Jesus Christ, because He is the resurrection, and He is the life. Amen.